Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 12 video tutorial. Now in this video tutorial, as you can plainly see on your screen at this point, we are going to be creating a film strip. Now I know I did this tutorial some time ago in version 10, and this is a revamp because with every version, something comes along that makes something easier to do. And Photoshop Elements 12 is no exception to the rule. So we are going to build a film strip today, but with far less steps than what it took us in version 10. So what we're going to do first of all here is we have our pictures we're going to be using and they are <clears throat> going to be the HDR picture here, this uh, lake picture, and we're going to be using this uh, picture of this lake. So these are three pictures. We have these in our photo bin down here at the bottom. So they're ready to go. All right, so what we're going to do at this point is we are going to go back and we are going to go to Quick Edit. Quick Edit, Jack is going to be doing something in Quick Edit, not Expert Mode. Sometimes, folks, it just simply works and we have to do it, you know, a certain way. What I found is under the basic frames that are provided here, I found a film strip frame. I thought, I think we can use this to do our film strip effect without making the film strip ourselves. And I tried it and it works pretty well. So let's go ahead and we're going to do this. Double click on the frame and you're going to see here it's going to put it around the actual picture. So there we go. We already got one picture with a film strip. Click on the next picture. Do the same thing. Double click the frame with the uh, film strip. And again, doing just what we expected it would do. We have a nice frame around there. Again. And we'll just double click again. And again, we have another really nice framed picture. Now, that was pretty easy. If you go back and go look at my film strip video I did of Photoshop Elements 10, you'll see how much faster we just completed that part of the uh, edit. Now we're going to just simply go up to our toolbar at the top where it says Quick, Guided, and Expert. We're going to click on Expert Mode and take our film strips back into the expert panel. So we now have these all ready to go. And what we're gonna look at now is simply taking these, so you got these different ones here. You can see here now we have these different uh, effects up here and different framing effects. So what I wanna do and what I thought I would do is we are going to take these and we're going to merge these layers down. Because in the end, we only need one layer per. Okay, same thing here. Just merge it down. And the same thing on this last picture. We're going to click the top panel, hold my shift key down, grab the bottom panel, right click, and we're going to merge it down. All right. So there is our film strips that we need to work with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer to put our film strips on. Now this new layer is going to have to be laid out, okay, so each one of these will fit. And what I mean by that is we have to make it longer than higher. So go to File, New, Blank File, and we are going to make the width longer. So we'll make the width, let's say we make it uh, 3000. And we'll make the height, uh, we'll go about, um, and there's no perfect solution for this, folks. You just base it on what you want to do. 3000 by 800. We're going to make the background contents white. Click OK. And there's our new strip. Now this is going to be the basis of our film strip. So when we lay these pictures on there, this is our film strip itself. All right. Does it make sense? Each picture is individualized right now with a frame around it that looks like a film strip. But it's not a film strip until you make a strip of pictures. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to grab this first picture and I'm just going to simply drag it and drop it onto my new, newly made strip. You see how that works already? Pretty cool. Click on the move tool here and I'm just going to move it now a little bit. And again, we're going to make these fit, so don't worry about that. Now I'm going to go back down to the bottom, click on my photo bin again in the far left. Far. Did I say far? In the far left. And we're going to click on the second one. And we're going to just drag this up and drop it into our new film strip. 
Okay, do you see a pattern having here? I hope so. We're going to pull this out a little bit here. I wanted to overlap just a little bit just so that white line is not there. And I'll show you another way we can correct that after a while. But, uh, you know, it's usually better when you're doing it this way. So we're going to leave the white line for right now. And we will we can correct that. And we're going to correct that here in just a bit. I'm going to glab. I'm going to glab. I'm going to grab the last picture and I'm going to pull it up and drop it into my film strip. Now this one came over here for some reason. That's okay. Now if you find out, you say, well, that's cut off a little bit. It doesn't quite fit. That's okay. Let's move the first one in a little bit. Until we make them all fit. So you have to move things around a little bit. And we'll move this one in a little bit. Now they're all fitting. If you want to get the exact same size, here's a trick. Put the one on top of the other. And look at it and say, yep, that's pretty much the same size. How about that? Good little trick for you. Now let's pull them back together again. So click on here. Click on here. We're going to move this one back a little bit. And we're going to move this one in a little bit. <clears throat> I'm just actually looking at the bottom, trying to line everything up, making sure it looks good. It looks fairly good for this tutorial. All right. Now what do we use, folks? Yep, the famous, the also famous cropping tool. Take our cropping tool, we're going to just pull it back across here. We're going to go right on top of our black. And let it go. And click OK. And you can see that cropped it down now into our film strip. See just a little bit of white here at the bottom. Which, you know, that's part of the edit. So grab this again here and see if we can't cover that a little bit. But I think it actually is. I don't think the picture is actually pulled down enough. So we're going to pull it down just a little bit more. Same thing here, just a little bit, just to line it up a little better. And now you don't see any white down there. Now where you do see white is right here in the middles, all right? So what I want to do is I'm going to grab my color picker tool. Right here is the color picker tool. Not a lot of people use the color picker tool. Or you can hit the letter I on your keyboard. And we click this black. Because I don't know what shade of black that is, so I'm just going to click it. And that's going to give me my foreground color. Now check out this little baby of a tidbit of information here. We're going to add a marquee tool and we're going to make a selection. And that selection is going to be right here. And the other selection is going to be around this one right here. We can see we lost the other selection there. So we can click down here and click on add to selection. And then we're going to make another selection here. That way we can select both of these at one time. All right. So remember at the bottom of your tool options, you want to click on add so you can add another selection. At that point, we're going to go to edit fill selection. And we're going to fill it with the foreground color because that's the color we picked. And when you do that and then go to select deselect, you can see now that we put black into that selection there is what we did. So we filled the selection with black. We're going to do that again just to make sure we can go here. We're just going to go here and go around this and go down. And we're going to edit, fill selection, foreground color with black. Now we filled the selection in with black. And if you want to, you can even paint that down there. You can go, okay, I'm going to paint that a little bit in there. You can paint in there but it looks like it's all filled in now properly there you go once we have that done folks basically at that point our film strip is completed right so we can go up to the top here and hold our shift key down on the top of your layer panel right click and we're going to merge the layers down now we have our basic film strip so what's next what do we got to do next Next, we have to have that table or something to lay the film strip on, right? The, the paper behind the film strip. So what I did, I'm going to go to image and I'm going to resize and image size. I'm going to look at the overall size of this. And it gives me 2915 width 
and 748 height. So I know I have to be bigger than this to have something to lay on there to make a background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it uh, 4,000 width. <clears throat> and I'm going to make it, uh, we'll go about 1,000 high. 4,000 by 1,000. So we're going to go File, New Blank File. The width is going to be 4,000. And the height is 1,000. Again, we're going to leave it white. And click OK. And actually, I don't even think that's big enough. So let's go to Image, Resize, Image Size. And we're going to actually change this to, see, 4,000 is not wide enough. So let's go 6,000. And we will go here. Uh, we're not going to do this. We're going to go here. I turned off the constrained proportions on the bottom there. We'll go here and make it 3,000. Make this page bigger. Oh, that's a little bit too big now, but you get the idea. Okay, so here's our page right here. What we're going to do now is simply get the film strip and we're going to put it on our new page. Let's go to the film strip. And all I'm doing is click on my tabs at the top. Go to your film strip tab. Click on select all. And that's going to select your film strip. Edit. Copy. Go back to your new background layer. Go to edit and paste. And we're going to paste that film strip on that new background. So there's our film strip. Very easily done. And not real difficult at this point. So what we're going to do now is click on that top layer. And we have to make some bends and turns in this. Because if you remember the one I did for Elements 10, it wasn't flat, right? There, it had some perspective to it. So we are going to do that. We're going to rotate this layer. Uh, as soon as I find it here. Rotate. 90 degrees to the right. Alright. So there's 90 degrees to the right. Now we have to give this thing some perspective. We have to bend it a little bit. The way to do that is go to Filter. Distort. And go to Shear. So as that comes up here. Okay, here's our shear. And what we're going to do now, you can see the film strip on the bottom. We're going to make it, we're going to bend it around a little bit. So we're going to bend it up and down and back and forth. You can bend as much as you want. And we do have this, this set to warp around. So it's warping, it's getting a warping effect. And we'll bring it back down a little bit. Because we're going to mess with this a little bit more. Click OK, and you can see now that takes our picture and kind of bends it around a little bit. Our film strip. Let's go back to Image, Rotate, and 90 degrees to the left. Now that puts it back to where we want it. But that's not good enough, right? It's never quite good enough for Jack's editing, so we're going to edit this some more. What we are going to do now is we are going to go under Image, transform and we're going to do some perspective perspective allows us to do just that it allows us to manipulate each side up and down back and forth so we're going to manipulate this and i like to go in because i want it to be a little perspective right i want it to be back and forth we'll pull this down a little bit make the front a little bit bigger and we'll just take this back out a little bit here All right, that looks pretty good, I guess. Because remember, folks, you still want to be able to see the images. You can still see the images in there. It looks pretty good. You know, I like that one for this edit. What we're going to do now is click on the top layer here, and we're going to click on Create a New Layer. The new layer is a piece of paper on the top. We've talked about this many, many times, so we're going to click on that new layer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make a little shadow underneath of our picture to do that we're going to need our friend the brush tool 
Once you have the brush tool, you can go down here and select your brushes. We can give yourself a little lighter brush if you want. And we'll say a num another uh, number 21 soft brush. But I'm going to blow that brush tip up there. So let's blow the brush tip up. And starting at the one corner, just take your brush. I'm just clicking my left mouse button and just dragging back and forth across here. Just like so. Now once I do that, you're like, well, Jack, it looks like a stupid drop shadow. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And you're right. It doesn't look too good. So what are we going to do with that? Well, let's go back up to Image, Transform, and once again, Perspective. Because now we could take that drop shadow, we can make it thinner on one side. Make it thinner on the one side. We're going to pull it up a little bit, up here. And we're going to pull it back a little bit. Let's pull this back. Oops. Let's pull it back, I said. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Pull it down a little bit. And then try to get it right on the corner up here of the actual uh, film strip. Is where you're trying to go. Something like that. And there you go. There is our drop shadow. Now what you want to do here is drop the opacity a little bit just to make it lighter because the shadow is not usually that dark, right? And now you're saying, Jack, wait a minute, why is the shadow in front of the picture? That's a good question. Because our layers are not properly stacked. So let's grab that film strip layer and pull it on top of the shadow layer. And now you can see we put the film strip on top of the shadow. The shadow is now falling behind the film strip. Very, very important step. you got to make things look realistic. Next, we're going to click on the background layer. And I don't like the color as before when I did this. So we're going to change the foreground color. We're going to pick something different this time. A little bit more red maybe. Uh, you don't want it too dark because you want that shadow to stay looking to see that shadow through. We're clicked on the layer here. So we're going to simply go to Image. I'm sorry, Edit, Fill Layer. And we're fill with our foreground color and just click OK. Then the last thing I like to do, folks, because that's a lot of background on there, is I like to just crop this out a little bit just to make it look a little nicer. Something like that looks fairly decent. And now we have a beautiful, beautiful film strip made with Photoshop Elements 12. I have my bottom layer selected. I hold my shift key down, click on that top layer, right click. I'm going to merge my layers down and make one solid layer with my new beautifully made wonderfully looking film strip you know that's how it works folks i hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial of photoshop elements 12 film strip and i hope you watch all my tutorials here on youtube please subscribe to the videos i would appreciate that very much also check out my websites as always jackstechcorner.com and thephotographyguy.net you can find a lot more uh, video tutorials and a lot of great, great information. So I hope you check those sites out. So until next time, as always, keep those shutters clicking. Keep your editors editing. And I'll see you back here very soon on Jack's Tech Corner for more Photoshop Elements video tutorials. Bye for now.